slave, this love I cannot understand. Unworthy, unworthy, a beggar in bondage and alone, but he made me worthy, and now by his grace, his mercy has made me his own. My sorrow and sickness lay stripes on his back. My sins calls the blood that was shed. My faults and my failures have woven a crown of thorns that he
Brother Garrett. Thank you, Sister Rebecca, Sister Jeannie, for those wonderful songs this morning. I love, love, love that, that last song you sang. What a blessing it is. All right, I think I failed to mention we're going to have a birthday supper tonight. I may have mentioned it. So, ladies, if you'll scratch up something today, or fellas, uh, whichever, uh, but we'll have the birthday supper after the, the baptismal service tonight. So, looking forward to that. Uh, this evening. All right, little ones, you can be dismissed at this time and go practice for the Christmas play. For those who are going to be in the sanctuary this morning, if you'll join me in the 116th Psalm, Psalm 116 this morning, I pray this message would be an encouragement uh, to our hearts today. As we have just come through Thanksgiving, I pray you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family I was able to enjoy some, some family time, probably a lot of turkey and, and stuffing and all the things that come along with it. But it's just a great time that we ought to be thankful for the Lord and uh, lean on the Lord. Amen. Uh, for what he does in our life. Because uh, I'm here to tell you in, in the society that you and I are living in, it's easy for us to want to live independently. Now I say that we, we live in a nation that's independent and praise the Lord for that. Uh, we serve in a, in a church that's an independent Baptist church, and praise the Lord for that. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, but there's things in our life, there's areas in our life to where we need absolute dependence. We need to be dependent upon God, dependent upon the Lord in our life. And uh, I tell you, I'm glad that I was brought up in a home that, that taught me very early on that, that, listen, I need to be dependent upon the Lord. Uh, to follow after the Lord and what he would have for me. So this morning we're going to read just an absolutely beautiful psalm. Just it, it is gorgeous and it really can speak to your heart if you allow the word of God to, to speak to you this morning. So let's look at Psalm 116. In verse number one, the psalmist says, of course, under the inspiration of the Lord, I love this first phrase. I love the Lord. Because he hath heard my voice and my supplication. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him, get this, as long as I live. What a statement. What a, just a beautiful statement this morning. The sorrows of death compassed me. And the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. How many sitting in here this morning could say that they've been down paths just like that? Trouble, sorrow, pain, hurt, misery. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. Well, the Lord. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. How many of you has been helped by the Lord before? We just sang about it just earlier. Love lifted me. What, what a blessing this morning. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. In other words, the psalmist is saying, listen, all that trouble all that burden, listen, so you can rest easy. The Lord's going to deal bountifully with thee. Verse number eight, for thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. What a beautiful passage of scripture this morning we've just read. And this morning, I'd like to bring just a simple thought entitled this, learning to depend, learning to depend. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we sure love you again. And Lord, we thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to be our Lord and our Savior, to pay our ransom on Calvary's cross. Father, thank you for being there for us in the hard times and the stressful times. Father, in the times to where we don't know where to turn, Father, I'm glad that we can depend on you to help us, to guide us, to direct us, to keep us, Lord, from falling. 
So, Father, I pray this morning we would look to you, Lord, that we would learn to depend. Lord, there may be someone here this morning that's lost, that's undone. Father, my prayer is that they would be convicted by your Holy Spirit this morning through your word and see their need. And they would learn to depend. So, Father, I pray for the Christian who's gathered this morning. Lord, that's trusting you, that's here, that's serving you. Father, I pray we would be encouraged, energized, and moved this morning to keep on keeping on, to keep on depending, to keep on trusting in you. Lord, we sure love you, and we thank you, Father, for loving us. In Jesus' precious name, we do humbly pray. Amen. Growing up in this area, as a child, there were several different big companies that folks worked for. And as a child, usually, they're, they're parents of friends and relatives, their parents either worked for R.J. Reynolds or uh, they worked in some manufacturing plant or they were farmers or they worked in the textile mills. Textile mills were big in this area when I was growing up. And then as I grew into the college years, I never worked at a textile mill, but I had several friends and uh, several friends of friends and family members who worked in t the textile industry. And I can't imagine working there in that uh, environment with all that thread moving and the, the yarn that was, that was going to and fro. Uh, my, 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 it would have to be mind boggling to work in that environment. But there's been many, many folks who have done that. And I heard one story on one occasion of a, of a lady who had got hired uh, to work in a textile mill. It was a knitting mill. And the boss man, the foreman, the shop foreman had told her, hey, listen, if there's a problem with the machine, let us know. We have folks here who will fix it. Brother Ricky, you know all about that, fixing those machines when they go haywire. Well, she was told that. Well, I don't know about you, but when you start a new job, when you're moving into a new career, you want to give your best effort, right? You, you, know, they, you don't want them to see any flaws in you, right? Well, she gets in there and she's working and she's doing her first shift. And if it was me, it probably wouldn't have lasted five minutes, but maybe she had lasted an hour or so. And all of a sudden it gets tangled and that thread's going everywhere. And the whole plant comes to a screeching halt. Can you imagine that? All the eyes looking at you, you've messed it all up. Well, she's frantically trying to pick out the, the knot and uh, listen, I, I would be lost. I would be lost trying to do that. Well, she tried her best and patched it back together. Well, it starts running again just for another moment and then it fizzles again. Finally, the shop foreman, the boss man, he comes walking by and he tells her, he says, listen, why didn't you call me? This is what I'm here for is to help you with the problems that you're going through. Friend, Christian, this morning, oftentimes we act just like that lady, don't we? Listen, life goes crazy. Life goes chaotic. The threads of life seems to be getting in a knot. And we go trying to pick it apart ourselves. When what we ought to do is rely on the Lord. He's there to help us through everything. And here we see a psalmist, a writer this morning. We don't know who he is. Uh, by the context here, it very likely probably was David, but we don't know. But he had problems in life. And he realized he could trust in the Lord to get him through the problems. He found help through the problems. This morning, you may be sitting here and maybe you're going through a troubling time in life. I want to direct you. I want to point you to the Lord today. He can be your help. He can be your refuge if we will just learn to depend. Learn to depend upon him. President Lincoln, probably one of the greatest presidents that's ever been president of the United States. Can you imagine being the president during the troubling time that he was president? Our, our country was at civil war. Here's a statement that he said. He said, it is the duty of nations as well as men who owe their dependence upon the overruling power of God to confess their sins and transgressions and humble sorrow, yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by history that those nations only are blessed whose God is the Lord. 
The awful calamity of civil war which now desolates this land may be a punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptuous sins. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient. Well over a hundred years ago, that's what the President of the United States said to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to God that made us. We have grown in numbers and wealth and power as no other nation has ever grown, but we have forgotten God. Imagine if President Lincoln could see us today. We have forgotten God. We have forgotten to depend upon him. We as Christians, oftentimes we forget to pray. Access to the Father anytime we would like, but yet we fail. Noah, if you look back in scripture, he certainly depended upon the Lord. He relied upon the Lord. He had to learn to depend. Can you imagine being tasked with building a boat? You've never seen a boat before. You've never seen rain before. But he trusted in the Lord. I think about Joseph. Can you imagine being Joseph? Sold out by your brothers. Sold into really a bondage. Then he's there in the palace and he's tempted and cast into prison. He's elevated to the palace once again. He's ruling. But you know what? All through his life, he depended upon the Lord. All through it. David, he depended upon the Lord. Daniel he depended upon the Lord. He, listen, when, when they said you can't pray, he continued to pray. When they threw him into the lion's den, he trusted in the Lord. He depended upon the Lord. Paul, in our New Testament, boy, oh boy, he relied on the Lord, didn't he? He had learned to depend. He learned through all the hardships, through the, the stonings, through the shipwrecks, through the beatings, to trust in the Lord. And friends, I'm here to tell you this morning, we need to depend upon the Lord. So the question I would pose to us today is who are we depending on? Who are we depending on? It's one of two. We're either depending on ourselves, or we're depending upon the Lord. And today we must make the decision to choose the Lord. May we see from this Psalm just a few vital areas that we can depend upon. Notice with me first, <clears throat> the exhibited decision in verse number one. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. He exhibited two decisions here in these two verses of scripture. As I mentioned, we're uncertain who this psalmist is. But there's no doubt we can look at the context here. We can see from the passage that he's enjoying some high moments in life and some lows, just like you and I, just like you and I. We have mountaintops and we have valleys. Some of you have gone through some valleys this year. Some of you have been on the mountaintops. But all through it all, you know what we need to do? Depend upon the Lord. Learn to depend upon him. Notice the first decision. He says right out of the gate, I love the Lord. Love the Lord. That love, it means to have an affection for. That word Lord, it's Jehovah. It's the existing one. We love a lot of things in life, don't you? Speaking of Brother Robbie this morning, and he loves that new car of his, right? He was showing me pictures of that car. He loves his car. Brother Jonathan probably loves a rifle or two he's got. Brother Randy, probably a tractor or two that he's got. They don't let him down from time to time. But there's things in life that we love, right? But the ultimate example of love should be our love for the Lord. It should not waver. It should not grow weak. It should go stronger day by day. Here the psalmist says, I love the Lord. What a blessing. I want to ask you this morning, can, can we say that? Could we say that with an honest heart? I love the Lord. Think about what all he has done for us just today. Just today what he's done for us. Maybe, listen, maybe if you've got one of our handouts that we give on Sunday mornings, the bulletin. Maybe somewhere on there you'd like to write, I love the Lord because. Because he's given me a spouse. 
because he's given me children, because he's given me a church. I, I love the Lord because he's given me salvation. I think it's healthy to think on why we love the Lord. We say it all the time, right? I, I love the Lord. Here, this psalmist shows why he loves the Lord. He says, why? He, he says, because he hath heard my voice and my supplication. What a reason to love the Lord. Wow. Because he hears our prayers. He hears our cries in the dark. What a blessing. He's heard us. Psalm 55, 22 says, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Friend, I don't care what you're going through, where you've been, what you're doing. You can call upon the Lord and he'll hear you. What a blessing it is. I know a man who was a, a submarine technician. I think I've told you that. He worked at the bottom of the ocean. And he's told stories about praying at the bottom of the ocean. You know what? The Lord heard him. Doesn't matter where we are physically. The Lord will hear our prayers. Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Psalm 50, 15, And I call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. You know what we need to do as Christians? We need to start glorifying the Lord a little more for what he's done for us. This man declares the reason for his love. It's, it's a consequential love, though. He gives a consequence. Uh, I love the Lord because he's heard me. Do you know why the Lord loves you? Because he is love. It's not a consequence. Uh, 1 John 4, 19. We love him. Why? Because he first loved us. John Phillips, a great preacher of the past, he said this. God's love is quite the opposite of ours. His love is not a consequent love, but a causeless love. His love is just God's love is because he is love. It is not what we are, but what he is that makes him love us. It's not like we've earned anything, right? He doesn't love David Allen Grubbs because David Allen Grubbs has done something great. No, he loves me because he loves me. He is love. With us, it is a I love the Lord because he has heard, just like this psalmist. Now ponder that thought for a moment, the love of God. With this, the, the psalmist makes a decision to love the Lord, to love the Lord with all his heart. But then he goes further. Notice what he says. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. He made a decision, a conscious decision to love the Lord. And not only to love the Lord, to call upon him as long as he lived. Think about a child calling out in the night, maybe for mama. Listen, maybe they, they, it, we're going through the flu season and cold season. And listen, probably some of your mamas have heard that call recently in the middle of the night. Friend, as long as you and I live, we need to be calling upon the Lord. Love the Lord and call upon the Lord. We see the exhibited decisions. Notice, secondly, the endured Desperation. Notice verse number three. <clears throat> he begins to talk about his love for the Lord, why he loves the Lord. But then he kind of opens his heart and shows us some of the things he's gone through. The, the sorrows of death compassed me. The, the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. When we read that just a moment ago, we asked, have you ever felt like that? Sure we have. Sure we have. For, for my family personally, this year has been a difficult year. For others personally, listen, it's been a difficult year. We've all gone through hardships. We've all gone through difficulties in life. There's sorrows that come. This life isn't easy. This life is difficult most of the time. And here this psalmist is enduring this desperation. There's times, no doubt, that he felt fearful. You ever felt fearful? I know us as men, we never want to admit that. Boy, we don't never get scared. That big old bear out in the woods, Brother Jonathan, we don't get scared of them bears, right? But there's times we are fearful. If we'll humble ourselves, we'll, we'll recognize that. Sorrows of death compassed me. He's in a fearful state. The sorrows, that word sorrows, you know what it means? Ropes. That's what the Hebrew word means is ropes. Can you imagine that? It's, it's entangled him. It's ensnared him. The sorrows of life. The more you get entangled, the harder it is to get untangled. 
Can you imagine the sorrows that maybe this man's gone through? And then he uses that word compass to me. That word compass, it means surrounded. So not only is he entangled, but these ropes of sorrow, these ropes of desperations are all around him. He all, honestly, he can't see a way out. So he has to learn to depend. There's times in my life, in your life, to where we've gone through a hard time and it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I'm here to tell you this morning, friends, there is. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he's here for you. And he wants to help you through the troubles, through the sorrows of life, through the fearful times in life. The Bible says in Psalms 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. What a verse. What a verse. Not only was he going through fearful times, but likely painful times. Painful times. Times and, and trials, they can become painful. They hurt physically. Emotionally and spiritually, they hurt. Trials do. He says he got hold, that, that got hold of me. That word got hold, it means to be found. I think about David. Think about the trials David went through. His son's just trying to kill him. Think about Job. Think about Job, all the trials that man went through. My, my, my. Paul, again, his trials. You know what Paul said, though, about his trials, about his afflictions? He said in Romans 8, 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The trouble, the, the pain that we go through, and we do, it doesn't compare to the glory that's awaiting us. Friends, I'm here to encourage you today to keep leaning on the Lord. Keep depending on the Lord. Though times get painful, though times get fearful, though there's desperation that's endured, may we keep our eyes on the prize. So we see decisions exhibited, desperation endured. Notice desires expressed, verse number four. Then called I upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. He realizes the situation that he's in. He expressed his desire to the one and the only one who could help. Uh, he's caught up in these ropes of sorrow. He's compassed about with this despair. And he calls upon the Lord. Friend, if you're here this morning, you're going through a tough time, a difficult situation. Would you call upon the one who can help you today? He's here. He's available. Friend, he wants to help you today. And we have access to him. John 14, 13 says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. The Father that may glorified in the Son. If you shall ask a thing in my name, I will do it. Hebrews 10, 19 says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. This man came to God in his time of need. He expressed his desire, a desire to be delivered. Now, this morning, maybe you're sitting here and you're saved. I pray that you are. I pray that everyone sitting here is saved and born again, heaven bound. But if you're not, regardless of what is going on in your life, you have a need that is monumental in your life. Listen, if you're lost today, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. You need to have eternal life. Friend, heaven is real, but so is hell. And Jesus Christ came to this earth. He lived a perfect, holy, sinless life to save you, to save me. Friend, we, got to get to the, we have to get to the point to where we realize that we can't do it on our own. We can't save ourselves. We can't do enough good works. We can't trust in a church membership. We can't trust in a baptism. We can't trust in all the things that we would do, right? We must get to the point where we realize we need Jesus. That we need him to pull us out of that miry clay. Friend, the Bible tells us as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. It doesn't matter how many wonderful and flowery things you've done in life. Listen, if you've never trusted in Jesus Christ, you're lost and you're hell bound. And hell is real. It's hot. It's miserable. It, it's a fire, friend, that will not be quenched. It, it's not a playground. It's not a place that we can uh, go and, and enjoy time with friends. It's misery. It's misery. But God commended his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
Listen, he has paid your sin debt. And friend, he wants to save you today. If you will by faith call upon him, realize the position you're in, realize the need that you have, and call upon Jesus Christ. He'll save you right now today. If you're lost today, friend, I pray that the Holy Spirit will convict you so violently this morning that you're not able to leave this building without being saved. That's my prayer. Because I don't want to see you go to hell. I want to see you, listen, enjoy eternity with Jesus Christ. I want to see the Lord turn your life around. Listen, everybody here this morning may be saved. I'm not sure. Only you know. Only you know. And only I know about myself. So, friend, I pray this morning, though, that you would consider Jesus Christ, consider his help in your life. Decisions exhibited, desperation endured, a desire expressed. Notice, fourthly, an experienced declaration. Notice verse number five. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. What a statement. What an absolutely true statement about our Lord. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Uh, this psalmist makes declarations about the Lord. Friend, you know what we need to do? We need to start making some declarations about how good God is. My heart was b b just burdened when, Tuesday night. Not really burdened. It was uh, expanded. We'll use that word, Tuesday night is I heard folks talk about how good God is. You know, we need to start doing that often, more often in our lives. Here he says that God is gracious, and he is gracious. I deserve hell, and so do you, but God is gracious. God is gracious. First Peter 2 and verse number 2, And new more babes desire the sincere milk of the world, that, the word that you may grow thereby. If so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. He's gracious, friends. This morning we need to realize how gracious our God is. Not only is he gracious, but the Bible says he's righteous. That word righteous, it means to be just. We're living in a society to where just and justice is falling by the wayside. But our Lord hasn't changed not one jot, not one tittle. He's still just. He's just. Psalms 11, 7 says, For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. He's righteous, my friends. Not only that, he's merciful. Notice what the Bible says. God is merciful. Think about how merciful he's been in your life and mine. All through life, listen, he's been merciful. Giving us what we don't deserve. Praise the Lord for that. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is mercy, friends. That is mercy. And not only that, he cares for us. The Bible says he preserveth the simple. Aren't you glad for that? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to be preserved by our Lord. He preserves the simple. And he has a place for you and I. He wants us to come to him with our burdens, with our cares. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me and I am meek and lowly in heart and shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's the Lord we serve. Praise the Lord for him. We've seen decisions, we've seen the desperation endured. We've seen the desire expressed, the declaration experienced. Lastly, notice the enjoyed deliverance. The enjoyed deliverance. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. I can almost picture this man in the middle of the night. He's been wrestling, thinking about the, the burdens of life. And he's reached out to God. He's learned to depend. And he says within himself, hey, listen, just rest. The Lord has belt, dealt bountifully with you. Friend, that's what we need to realize. The Lord is dealing bountifully with us. Verse number eight, for thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. This man is seeing victory. Friend, you and I, we need to see the victory. Sometimes, you know what we need to do? Is quit sitting idly by and get up and walk. Walk for the Lord. Live for the Lord. 
This deliverance, it brought relief. He was restful in his soul. John 14, 27, Christ said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, let, your heart, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Friend, we can have peace this morning. Peace that passes all understanding. He had relief, he had rescue. The Lord brought him out of that terrible place he was in. And praise the Lord for that. And friend, this morning he'll bring you out of the terrible place you're in. Listen, the, the trouble that you're going through, he's there for you if you'll learn uh, to depend. And then he gave him a resilience to walk, to walk. The Bible says in Psalms 119, 105, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. You know what that tells us? We need to get up and get going and keep moving for the Lord. Ephesians 2, 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus and the good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That's what we need to do. So friends, this morning as we close, as we tie a bow on this message this morning of learning to depend. Friend, maybe you're here this morning and you've been trusting in yourself, trusting in your abilities, trusting in your knowledge, trusting in your own wisdom. Maybe today it'd be a good time to learn to depend, to, to give it to the Lord. This man that we've just read, listen, he went through some hardships and he learned a lesson. Friend, that you and I must learn, learn to depend. The question I would pose to you this evening, this morning, as we close, is who are you depending on? Is it yourself, someone else, or is it the Lord? We saw the decision, we saw the desperation, we saw the desire, the declaration, and we saw the deliverance maybe this morning. Maybe this morning you'd like to come to an old-fashioned altar and just tell the Lord why you love him. This man, he loved the Lord. And maybe you'd like to do the same thing. Maybe you'd like to bend a knee this morning and say, Lord, I love you because. I love you because you've done this. I love you because you've brought me through this. What a blessing to praise the Lord this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and you're lost. I plead with you. Come to know Jesus Christ. Don't put it off one more moment. We're not guaranteed that we'll ever walk back through those doors again. Trust me, my friends. Uh, my mother in February preached the message on that Sunday evening and she never walked back through the doors again. There's been others who have been lost who have sit right here in this church, gone away to, to never come back. Friend, I plead with you, come to know Jesus today. Don't delay. Don't hesitate. The Bible tells us this, life is but a vapor. We're here one minute. We're gone the next. This morning, the fog was so thick you couldn't see across the pond over there. But as I look out now, it's gone. That vapor has dissipated. It's gone. Friend, that's the way our life is. Would you trust Jesus today? Father, Lord, we sure love you. We thank you, Father, for loving us. We'd like to thank you for joining us today on our live stream service. We pray that you are encouraged, that you were blessed, and that you were challenged by God's word. If we can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to reach us at our email below. We pray that you have a wonderful day and God bless.